Hello everyone, this is Anthony Wilson. Welcome back to Magic Talk. <clears throat> You'll have to uh excuse my voice. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work through it here. Um today we're gonna be talking about two decks that I've seen pop up recently and a lot of people have been asking me about uh what I think it's gonna look like now that everybody knows that the decks exist, uh how to beat it, and, and just different things that you can do if you if you encounter it or plan on playing the deck. So the first one we're going to look at is this four color control list by Chris Higashi. Now this deck is very unique and very interesting and something new, and uh, it looks very very powerful running cards like Nico Bolas, Sark the Mad, and uh, it's, uh, different stuff. Seagate Oracle, Deny Reality. Now uh, a deck like this probably relies very heavily on the early Birds of Paradise Lotus Cobra. If you see these, if you go up against this deck and you see these drop turn one and turn two, get rid of them. Because these are these are what fuel the deck and a lot of people if, if you've played Magic enough you should know that if you see these hit the table you need to get rid of them. They're very important. Uh so if you're trying to beat this deck, get rid of these guys. Another trend I've been seeing is any decks that have Lotus Cobra in them, that that run Lotus Cobra, are very dependent on the cards in their hand. They they I know that that seems retarded to say, but uh, hear me out. They need to get the most out of every card in their hand. They can't afford to to lose any. There's no there's no useless cards in this deck. So, what I see with Lotus Cobra is if you can make your opponent discard cards, Lightning, Mind Rot, Mind Sludge. These are all amazing cards against Lotus Cobra because now they have nothing left. So, uh, a good way to try to beat this deck is probably to make a discard. By turn three, um, he's probably got everything set up. If you can make him discard two of those cards in his hand, it'll probably weaken the deck or, or weaken his game and his strategy uh, uh, pretty badly. Um, so that's that's probably a, a, a good thing to do is probably make them get rid of those extra card or those useful cards in his hand. There's not a lot of not much else I can see to try to beat this deck. Um, it's 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 really strong. It's got this the the blood braid vengevine combo going on here, um, and it doesn't look like he can cascade into anything but cre uh, but creatures except for maelstrom poles. Um, so I guess blue decks uh, should be considering um, mind break trap, uh, maybe in their sideboard to get rid of this or to to stop this kind of stuff from happening, because you've got you've got uh, deny reality here. So he cast he can cascade, he hits deny reality into Bloodbraid Elf, into and whatever, Maelstrom Pulse or Sedraxa Spectre. Uh Mind Break Trap is a good way to shut this kind of stuff down. And it looks like uh it's kinda of reliant on, on that card advantage on that advantage of of cascading like that. So if you can get rid of everything. Now it doesn't stop the Vengevine. The Vengevine's of course still gonna come back. If he, he casts if he's got Vengevine in his graveyard, deny reality into Bloodbraid Elf into Lotus Cobra. He, you know, or, or even Sajaxa Spectre, he's gonna get the Venge Vines back. You can't stop that. But four damage, or a four-three dude on the board is better than all that stuff that he just cast. So, um, consider Mind Break Trap in the sideboard to try to beat this. Um, something else uh, I've noticed is is Mana Base. Uh, Tectonic Edge uh, hasn't been played as much recently as it has in earlier days um, in this standard format. If you can destroy his his Mana Base, if you can uh, keep getting rid of of key lands. You could probably hold him back uh, for quite a while, uh, keeping him from dropping uh, his bombs like Nico Bolas or destroying one of his colors, so he can't he can't cast Sidrax Inspector or Bloodbraid Elf or get enough mana to deny reality. So um, anything that destroys lands or shuts lands down, uh, spreading seas might be a good idea as well. Uh, try to try to control the mana base a little, his his mana base a little bit, uh, to to keep him from cast, uh, casting the spells he needs to cast. Here, because you see all his spells very color dependent. Did double green, uh, three colors, um, you know, two colors. Very, very color dependent. So if you can, if you can kind of control the lance he has on the board, you might be able to beat this deck. Um, this is what the sideboard looks like right here. I don't think the sideboard for him is going to change much, except for maybe uh, a pyroclasm. He said in an interview that he wishes Pyroclasm was something else. So uh, I'm not sure what this might become or what the deck might look like. The deck is is obviously going to alter itself now to deal with the mirror match. People are going to be running this deck. Um. So 
try to keep in mind if you're going to build this deck that you're going to you're going to see the mirror match. You're you're going to need to be able to beat the mirror match. I suggest cards like Blightning. Blightning might be good here. Uh, you know, Bloodbraid Elf cascade into Blightning, or just casting Blightning on turn three, uh, right after they drop their Lotus Cobra with nothing else. You know, they got nothing else to do. So those are those are probably good ideas. Um, even um, the Goblin Goblin Rune Blaster and destroying lands might not be bad here either. So uh, keep in mind that you you probably going to play the mirror match, and you need to keep uh, some ideas open to to try to beat this matchup. Um, the next deck we're going to look at right here is Connolly Woods Mono White Life Gain deck. Now I've I've had a lot of interesting stories about this deck, um, mostly from a lot of friends of mine who had uh, almost card for card this similar idea, uh, and they had it built in standard, and everybody told them it was a horrible idea and don't do it. And now we see one of the greatest deck builders in the world, Connolly Woods, running this deck and doing re very well with it. So. Um, this should tell you this if if anything you should take from that is is don't be afraid uh, of coming up with something new and an idea and and making it work uh, if somebody tells you it's stupid but you you're pretty confident it'll work prove it to them take it to tournaments win win events with it show them that that your ideas are good and that they work and that you know bring something new to the table don't let them keep telling you all oh, that's stupid don't do it just just do it and see what happens uh, you know it might not always turn out like this guy but you never know so the idea of this deck is to gain a lot of life using Souls of Ten Soul Warden and uh, pumping up a Johnny's Pride Mate really, really big and casting uh, big bombs like uh, Sarah Ascendant. So the reason I think he did so well with this deck is he caught the field off guard a little bit. Uh, there's there's not a lot of black removal. Nobody's playing, uh, you know, no, there's no vampires to to start killing stuff there's no you know so he's not running into any black decks or a lot of black removal there's not much John right now so he was able to get by without uh, a lot of interference which I think was a little little odd um, but I do see problems uh, with the deck I, I see it it's very good don't get me wrong this is an amazing deck but very susceptible to black removal um, and even maybe even some burn to counteract this, obviously, he was running the four Brave the Elements, which is a great idea, not just for preventing damage and stopping people from killing all his dudes or sweeping the board, but uh, for to Alpha Strike as well. Um, say he went up against uh, the Mirror Match or or any other any other deck where he can't get through, he cast, he cast Brave the Elements and all his dudes swing through for the win. Um, so, this deck, I don't see it changing much in the future, maybe a little a little bit more to beat the mirror match. Um, I don't know what that would entail. I don't know how you would beat the mono white mirror match other than Brave the Elements, which he already has. Uh, maybe uh, Johnny Goldmane instead of Elspeth to win the War of Attrition. Maybe get your dudes a little bigger. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of different ideas here. I guess can't really think of all of them right now. Uh, some problems I do see, like I said, black removal is is pretty susceptible to black removal. Um, I don't know what he would do if he had his board set up and consume the meek, uh, which nobody's playing right now. Which I, I don't understand why people aren't playing. Consume the meek seems like an excellent spell right now. Um, it gets it, it destroys wallet denial, it destroys almost everything in this deck except for a ranger of eos. Um, it gets rid of a lot of stuff. So maybe consider playing uh, consume the meek somewhere. Um, the blue-white control decks, I guess, run Wall of Denial. I, I don't know. This is this is a tough one. Uh, this deck is really, really good. If you can, uh, I don't know, Red Ley Line is a possibility. I've seen a lot of people uh, running this deck. A change that I do see people uh, running in this deck, I guess, for the Mirror Match, a friend of mine came up with was he was putting green ley line in his sideboard. No green sources at all. Just uh four green ley, ley lines to try to beat the mirror match. You know, you gain you gain more life that way. And your dudes are a little bigger. So um that's an idea. But as far as is is trying to beat this deck uh I don't I don't really see anything other than, than black removal is is uh the best thing I could see. Uh you know, day of judgment's not bad. And stuff like that. Try to avoid uh, board sweepers. 
like chain reaction or or um, pyroclasm esque effects, that kind of stuff, because rave the elements will will hurt that really bad. So try to avoid doing that, th doing those kind of things, and and focus on trying to uh, remove the creature directly, or or trying to get them to sacrifice things. You know, uh, consuming vapors isn't a bad idea. All his dust isn't a bad idea. So stuff like that to try to to keep his board clear. Uh, if you can do that, I I think you might you might be able to beat this deck. But other than that, I I can't really think of any other way to get around it. So th this deck is 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 pretty good really solid. But um, if you have any other ideas about either of these two decks uh, that I talked about today, please feel free to message me and let me know what you think. Uh, I would really love to hear your feedback and, uh, and hear what you have to say. Well, I hope this has been uh, educational and entertaining, and thanks for watching.